Okay, so in this video, we will look at the error estimate in the case of alternating series. Now, the idea is the following. Given a convergent series, it is in general very difficult to find the exact value that the series converges to. So, if that's not possible, our next option is to obtain an approximation, which is easily done by summing up the first few terms of the series. We could sum the first 10 terms, the first 20 terms, the first 500 terms. And this will give us an approximation to the exact value of the series. A natural question to ask is how good is our approximation? And the error estimate provides such an estimate in the case of alternating series. So here's the assumption. So we assume that we have a converging alternating series. So the sum from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n bn. And recall that given an alternating series, where bn is a positive sequence, all it takes for the series to converge is that bn eventually decreases, and in the limit as n approaches infinity, bn must converge to 0. Given these conditions, the alternating series converges. So we'll assume here that bn satisfy the sequence bn uh, satisfies these conditions, and so the series that is not an alternating series converges. So if our alternating series converges, then, well, we want to compare the exact value of the series. So if we indeed sum all the terms of our series. This is the exact value again. If a series converges, the infinite sum returns some real number. And we want to compare this by an approximate answer. So what if we sum from 0 up to uppercase n, so a fixed number of terms? And we want to look at the difference between the exact value of the series, the approximate value, and absolute value. This is the error, right? Given an exact value, an approximation, the error is the difference in absolute value between the exact value and its approximation. And I really want to stress this here. This is the exact value of the series. We're summing all the terms. And here, as we're summing only the first few terms, we're starting at 0, and we're stopping at a fixed point. n here could be 10, could be 7, could be 23. Any given point will do. This is, of course, an approximate value. And What's nice is the error estimate, how big can the difference be in the absolute value between the exact value of the series and an approximate value of the series, is remarkably simple. It is bounded above, therefore at most, the size of the first omitted term. So here we're summing up to uppercase n. Well, the first term we omit is when lowercase n is uppercase n plus 1, and the size of the term is going to be b sub lower subscript uppercase n plus 1. And that's it. The key point is this is the first omitted term. So if this was 5, this would be 6. If this was 13, this would be 14, and so forth. And that is the error estimate in the case of alternating series. Such a beautiful and simple result. And we know that as we sum more and more terms, our approximation will become better and better and better as, because the series converges, we know the sequence bn shrinks to 0 as n tends to infinity. So the more terms we are adding, the smaller the error, and so the better our approximation. Let's look at an example of this. 
We will prove this result in our next video. Let's look at an alternating series that we have considered a few times so far. So the sum of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n as n goes from 1 to infinity. So let's write out the first few terms of our series. This is 1 minus a half plus a third minus a quarter plus a fifth minus a sixth plus 1 over 7 minus 1 over 8 plus and so forth. So this is clearly an alternating series and the n is 1 over n, which clearly is positive, clearly decreasing, and clearly shrinks to 0 as n goes to infinity. So we have convergence. And if you recall, and this was less obvious, not only does this series converge, but it converges to exactly the ln of 2. And again, we will show this later. So we want to approximate this infinite series, so let's sum the first few terms. So we'll sum from 1 to 10, so the first 10 terms of the series. So let's expand those out. So now we have truncated the infinite series. The infinite series never stops, and here we say we stop at 10, the 10th term of our series. So now this is a finite sum. We can easily evaluate this. So if you use your pocket calculator, you will find that as a rational number, if you keep the exact value in each case for the fraction, you will find it is 16 27 over 2520. So this is the exact single fraction that corresponds to this sum. And of course, if you want a decimal expansion, you can punch this in and ask your calculator to return the decimal expansion. And you will find approximately 0 0.645 six three four nine two so there you go so now we have an approximate value for the infinite series and more interestingly for ln of two well we now ask of course how good is our approximation how close is this to the exact value of the series therefore to ln of two well, we will use our error estimate. So in absolute value, we have the exact value of the infinite series. Minus its approximation, a truncated version of the infinite series. And now we use the error estimate, which says that the size of the error <coughs> is never bigger than the first omitted term. So here we are stopping at 10. So this will be b 10 plus 1, b 11. But again, we can put it here, b n is 1 over n the positive part of our sequence, so b11 is simply 1 over 11, which is in decimals exactly 0 0.09 periodic, which is approximately 0 0.091. And now, let's replace 
the infinite series by its exact value of ln of 2 and the truncated sum by its exact value as a rational number. And we have a very interesting statement at this point. So we have that in absolute value, the difference between the exact value of the infinite series, which is ln of 2, and the exact value of the truncated series, therefore the approximation, as a rational number, 1627 over 2520, the difference is at most 1 over 11. And now let's compare the decimal expansion that your calculator returns in this case, and then if you punch in your calculator ln of 2, we'll look at the decimal expansion of that as well to see if indeed this looks legitimate. So, as we have said before, if you ask your calculator to return the decimal expansion of this rational number, you get approximately this. So 0 0.645634.92. And now we're seeing that the difference between this fraction and ln of 2 is at most 1 over 11. You can think of it as roughly, you know, 0 0.1. So this should be pretty close to ln of 2. Well, now take out your calculator and punch in ln of 2. And you should obtain from the calculator roughly 0 0.693171818. And so you can see this looks pretty good. We're saying the error is no bigger than roughly 0 0.1 if you round up here. And indeed, our first decimal place is correct and we're off in the second decimal place. But we've only added 10 terms of the series. I mean, this was not much work. The exact value of the infinite series is, again, the sum of an infinite number of such terms. We've only added 10, and even by adding only 10, the first 10 terms of our series, we still have obtained a rather interesting approximation. This is not great, but it's not bad either. If we added a thousand terms, then the error would be roughly at most one over a thousand. So we'd be getting something much closer to ln of two than with only the first ten terms. And I want to conclude with one last remark. Ask yourself this. When you're punching ln of two in your calculator, what does the calculator do to return this value? It's not magic. It uses exactly this idea of infinite series. So every time you punch in some complex function like a logarithmic function, an exponential, a sine, a cosine function, the calculator, to be able to return a very good approximation to these numbers, will make use of infinite series. And so all the calculator does and this you may consider sometimes uh, fancier series that will converge faster, therefore will give you a better approximation from adding fewer terms, but ultimately it has to rely on infinite series. So the exact value is the result of the infinite series, and the calculator will return an approximate value from a truncated infinite series. And so ultimately, infinite series are the key to understanding how a calculator works. And ultimately, a calculator is nothing more than a very efficient sixth grader. Because if you think of it, when you're considering 
an infinite series, we're usually just adding up or subtracting rational numbers. So this can be done by hand, no problem, as long as we can add rational numbers, subtract them, and then perform long division by hand. And this you should be able to do since grade 6. And that's all a calculator does, except it does it much faster than you can. So ultimately when you look at a calculator, it's not just a magic black box. It really is ultimately a really quick 6th grader because all it can do is add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers, which you know how to do since grade 6. And again, I want to leave you with this, that infinite series are giving you a glimpse of how a calculator returns such approximations. And that's it.